would go a bit, you know. Behave. We <laughs> 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 got nine o'clock. Let's stand for the pledge. Who's going to lead us? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Oh, Mark Starbrook. Present. Greg Scott. Yeah. Jenny David. Here. Uh, Brad Newbecker. Is he coming? Have you heard anything? Uh, no. Ron Vaughn. Present. Uh, any additions or corrections to the agenda? Commissioners? Oh, no. Commissioner Scott? I think we did that. Do you have any additions or corrections to the agenda? Uh, no. Oh. I, just, I was going to add um, the economic outlook for the EDC on I. So, uh, public item to public comment. I'm not going to read that. I believe, Tom, I got your email that says that it's, it is posted online. Sure, it's on the website. So the first public comment is related to agenda items only. Three minutes, please. Is there any uh, public comment in the room? Any public comment on the phone? Item three, appointments. 3A, Chris Casey, custodian maintenance supervisor related to courthouse and grounds procurement card limit. Good morning, Chris. Good morning. How are you? All right, how are you? I'm glad I seen you out there. <laughs> Remind you of this. <laughs> no, I've been thinking about it. Just reading it. <laughs> Who had questions for Chris? I believe Commissioner Scott, you did. Uh, what's, what's the need? Uh, we had a sit well, it's been several situations, but the biggest one was our controller, our power supply for our HVAC controller went out and uh, they don't make the part anymore. But, so we had to call Honeywell and they, they had uh, used one that we could buy from them. But since we're not in their system, they had to have a credit card to do the service on it. So Tim had a credit card and I had a thousand. So we uh, gave him the two numbers but mine already had a balance of like 500 on it. So that one didn't go through. So, I mean, that was one issue. So you're asking for a $1,500 limit, correct? Is that what it is? Or three? Mm, like 25, I thought it was. 2,500 yeah. is what you're asking? I mean, it's like five buildings that we're taking care of. So it doesn't take long over the course of a month to mm -hmm. occur more than $1,000. Questions for Chris? It's building maintenance. It's, I mean, it's things that have to be done. Joy and joy is stuff that can't wait. Right. It's got to be taken care of. care of. That they had that part <clears throat> coming up to here and that county the next day. So how it often, was like a miracle. That I how often would you say, as far as a $2,500, is that monthly? Is that rarely? Is that? Oh, it's rarely. But like right now, we wanted to get a baby changing stations, but I already have $800 on my credit card and they're 150 piece. So if you get four of them, you know, I'm having to put that off. And Karen was off on vacation that last week, so we couldn't get balance paid on it to do it. Question, Commissioner Becker, questions? Same way, having a couple of hundred dollars is a lot of money. A lot of stuff we do. $2,500 on five buildings is a lot of money. For, for, one, for one single purpose, yeah. But this is this is a total of this isn't just for one single. Is this for one single purchase or is this for the card balance? Yeah, it's for the card balance for the month. That's right? how I take it as right. not so like at, the, at the end of the month, if something comes up that's over two hundred dollars half the time, it gets I would high. have to wait on it. Correct. So I'm understanding that correctly. It's a total of twenty five hundred dollars per month, not one single purchase of twenty five hundred dollars. No, but we can spend up to twenty five hundred. Right. I mean, but I would without asking you, but I mean, well, I think it's going to kick in some other process. He's just right. not confused that. But what, what the chair has described is exactly right. It's 2500 a month. So right. you get a purchase of 1500 There may be you know, 1000 left on it. The right. end of the month is paid. So it's back to twenty five. It's just right. kind of a right. rolling cap. And that's what our policy says. Is our policy month? says $1,000. And oh. it, that's just how the by bills are paid. Or, or I purchase. But we do it every two weeks. We, we do but it at the credit card. Credit card. You only get monthly. You only get billed monthly. It is <clears throat> just like it's a normal credit card. You get your and this month. She was off this last week, so and then she was off last for for a little help yeah. issue too. Was off for a couple weeks, right? Well, I would think we have accounts of every with everybody. 
Well, we don't. Honeywell, we don't have an account with us. Well, because they, they charge they offer dollars them. an hour. You know? But they offer them, don't they? You said well, they, they because we them. weren't in their system. They do offer them. I mean, we used to pay them $36,000 a year for uh, maintenance. We take care of it ourselves now, so okay. as much as possible. But when we run into a situation like that, where like the baby the stations, thing. I mean, where do you buy that from? The what? The baby stations. Where do we buy them from? Probably like U Line or something like that. You know, I mean, whichever one's cheapest right now. I mean, the cheapest I found was 158. Okay. I mean, you can spend 280. I'd be getting from Marvel Central for 280. Well, I just. <laughs> Does this, that this, have now? This, thing, this whole thing is just amazing because we used to have one credit card in, in the county. Right. And that was in the fine too. office, you know? And then all of a sudden it explodes. Everybody's got to have a credit card, use it all the time. That would be fine if Karen had one available. I don't care if it's in my name or not, but one should be available for the building to make purchases like that. I don't have a problem with this. I agree it's maintenance and those parts are typically quite pricey yeah, when you're looking at HVAC or electric or, or right. whatever for right. a total per month of right. $2,500, not right. per purchase. No, no. No, I don't have an issue with it. I've talked to Chris a couple of times about it, and I think Ron has too. Um, and I go back to Craig before there was any credit card in this county. Yeah, I've had to put it on there. You put, you put it in. I, I put more stuff on my personal credit card and then turned it in for purchases. But I mean, you guys have you guys are reviewing bills currently. You get to review. Exactly. If you have any questions? If you have any concerns. And I know there are some questions as far as trying to stay local. Do you try as much as possible yes, to stay I, local? I shop at Ace Hardware, Home Depot, Tractor okay. Supply, all that. It was a question. But as far as janitorial supplies, you know, I deal with the janitorial company, you know, that has all the supplies, you know, and has all the expertise. No, I, I don't know. You know what comes out. Well, I mean, it's it's easier to deal with one company yep. for sure, you know, because we're in their system, you know, and uh, he looks out for us and, you know, like through the COVID or whatever, when there's a shortage of paper. So is that right online? Now. You said Janet. No, no, right? no. He comes up every every two weeks. He comes up. Okay. So, and I see him every, a lot, you know, of, a lot of these products we buy. Other departments are buying a lot of these products right here locally. Ten Nozier buys a lot of his paper products locally that, that you know, and yeah. when I brought this up five years ago, the local price was cheaper. It was, yeah, for a cheaper toilet paper, it was, but no, not for the same. It, no, it wasn't. It was, he sells, he sells the same stuff for the same price. Greg, I showed the label to him. <laughs> where do where do you guys go locally, Mr. Um, Roger? It's for our paper products. Yeah. Up, up to the. No, we're talking like. Are you yeah. talking toilet toilet paper? Toilet 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 paper. Yeah. Just toilet. That's paper. where he buys it from. They sell toilet paper. Yes. Yeah, they're trying to like get into that. They sell overpriced pens and cheap toilet paper. Pretty much. <laughs> 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 you did you say that aloud? Yes, I did. It's the truth. Okay. It's fine. It's <laughs> it is the truth. I knew they sell pens. I didn't know they sold toilet paper. Yeah, who knew? <laughs> <laughs> we did. Who knew? We did. Yeah, yeah you knew. Um, I don't have a problem. Any other questions? Tim, do you have input on this? I definitely understand the need, and we we did scramble. On oh that, yeah, uh, that one part. I mean, we had it was like a miracle that it all came together. together really, that they could get up here and get it fixed that quickly. You know, most of the time it'd be like a week, two weeks out to try to get a part like that. That's not even manufactured anymore. And again, it's maintenance. It's not a, a office that we're looking at. Right. I mean, this is these are expensive right. parts. Oh yeah, for sure. And, it might be and service too. You know, I mean, it's like they charge two hundred bucks an hour. It's Honeywell. You know, what I mean? to, to service. What do you That's utilize something. for service? We try to do most of it ourselves. You know, but sometimes you can't. Like right? plant, we've had a go go before, and we were lucky enough to find one on eBay. But that was like you know seven or eight years ago. So they've been, you know, it was probably new old stock somebody had in their cabinet somewhere. You know. And, so we but I'm talking as far as like service, people coming to for well, AC, we were or using, electrical or, or we were using Brad, but now we've been running into issues with him. Brad from Northern, oh, Morris? from Northern, you know. So we've been running into issues with them. So now I've contacted a, a custom engineering. They're from Linwood, but because we have all them rooftop units at the jail, they're like pretty much the closest train 
I use Gail's over in, uh, where the heck is he? Really? Omer. Omer. I really like them. Danny yeah. Hills. Yeah. These guys seem to be pretty good. I like Brad too, but, you know, he's sold out well now to he's a busy. different company. And, uh, yeah, I think he kind of got us on the last one, actually. We just want to do, try to stay local as much as possible and right. support our people. Oh, yeah. For sure. Well, can we put that on? Have somebody who shows up to the last thing. You know. Agreed. That's big. How long have you been doing this? Year? Yep. Like, oh, 12 years, I think. Yeah. You staying with us for a while? Possibly. <laughs> but you guys got plans. <laughs> That's just a vicious woman. <laughs> Tom starts. <laughs> Tom starts. <laughs> Tom starts. <laughs> Longevity depends on the person. <laughs> <laughs> Can we put that on for a resolution? Are you guys okay with that? You. Yeah. Commissioner Dubecker, are you okay with putting it on for a resolution? No, no. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. Okay, thank you, guys. Tom, you're next. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of YouTube views, <laughs> um, I put together the report a little bit later than the 90 days that we had talked about, but uh, upload it to your Google Drive. Try to answer the questions the best I can. I'll admit I'm not a YouTube pro, but uh, been looking at the statistics. There's people out there watching. Um, I personally don't think it's a lot, but uh, I can't say. I don't know where these where these derive from. They're not just Oklahoma County, so these are. Um, I did look. There was a um, country in there, and it did say they all originated from the United States. So, um, first column is the number of views. I, I sorted by the top views. I'm not quite sure what was on the agenda September second, but that happened to be the top viewed video. Um, the next column is the number of hours that the audience spent viewing that particular video. Um, third column is the impressions. So if you go to YouTube and you type in Ogemaw County, it might come up with a uh, video about the Rifle River. Then the second one would be a commissioner's meeting. Um, that would count as an impression. So chances are, if you type in Ogemaw County commissioners, you're going to get all of the video slits and account as an impression. And um, the number of people in the last column that actually clicked on a video from an impression is what uh, generated that number. So, what does that mean? I didn't understand that one. Which one? Impressions? Yeah. Click through. Impressions are the number of times that a thumbnail came up in a result. So, if you went to YouTube and typed in Oklahoma County mm -hmm. and it showed a thumbnail of that video, that's an impression. The second video would be an impression. The third video would be an impression. Okay. That's how much your video came up as an impression. So the last one, the click through rate. So it, that's the number <clears throat> of times a user saw that impression and clicked on it. Okay, look, so, go really ahead. The, the first two would be the more important the views and the watch time. We, we, had a, we had total views or people that clicked right on the video and watched it. I couldn't find anything on YouTube that from directly from them that's I wanted to know what constitutes a view and I found it on a third party website was a person that intentionally clicked on the video and watched it for more than 30 seconds and then I and then my mind started to wander <laughs> if it's a repeat view and I couldn't get a clear answer on what would generate another view from the same user um, still in all this is a lot bigger number than most people think oh I agree 121 for a one particular meeting, 121 views. I don't know how many of those are repeats. So too. Well, even, if, even if all of them are repeats, that's 60. <laughs> I looked at it though. You know, when you, you have so many people come in here and say, nobody cares, oh, I agree. nobody watches. I agree. You know, that screen's full of people watching. But it's still surprising to me last night I was at a- And this is after the fact. Last night I was at a township meeting and, and I brought this up. And nobody seemed to even realize that they could watch this. So I, I still don't think a lot of people are aware of this. That could be. I mean, um, and it was a full full meeting, so that's why I put it out there. And I looked at it. There's twenty thousand, twenty one thousand people in Oklahoma County. One hundred and twenty one watched the video. That's less than half. Oh yeah, yeah. 
Oh, absolutely. That, is, like, that is poor. I, I, that's the way well, I look at it. <laughs> you can slice it multiple ways, but I looked at the top video, half a percent of Oldham County watched it. And it doesn't mean that everybody's in Oldham County watching these either. We know no. that there's out of county watching them. Right. But that was just what popped into my head. Again, I but don't this think... This would be a view afterwards. This is not a view during them. Correct. Meeting. Correct. You can the Zoom is during the meeting. Correct. Which I'll say those average... 15 to 30, depending on what's going on. And you would never get that that many in an in-person meeting. Right. No. 18 right there. You know, I agree. How many? <laughs> you know, it's a great thing. 18 right now. There's 17, one of them is us. I mean, all my time here, I don't think I've seen 17 people in the audience on a regular meeting that had no 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 controversy. No, yeah, no controversy, <laughs> no, no topic. So I guess what's your, um, as far as data-wise and keeping these videos for a period of time, have you? Let them go. There's no, we have no cap on how many we can store. So maybe, so the, maybe a year from now, make a retention schedule. So there is no issue right now with storage or time it takes for you to do this or? Nope. I don't always get them up. I'm, I'm, you know, there's a lot of times I take off after the commissioner's meetings, especially when they're in the morning. But uh, I usually get them up the following Monday or whatnot, unless I get an email from somebody that specifically wants it right away. I'll, I'll get on it and get it uploaded. But usually it's the following day, or if it's on a day like today, I'll upload it later before I go. Because it, it takes a while after the meeting to process it too. It's not immediately when we close. It's not done. So, but no, I don't, I don't have any problem uploading. So like every every three months, can you can you plan on going over this or at least sending this the slide like this so we can see it and questions for Tom? I'd say if he can maintain, if he can maintain them for a year after a year. Yeah. It's not sucking up storage space on the server. Just just dispose of them after yeah. a year and call it good. For a year. Sure. Commissioner Scott. Uh, I'm good with that. But then we should make a policy for that. Then. So that's set in stone. That's, that it's yeah, that's what he was talking about, the retention policy. And you're on YouTube. Yeah. yeah. And then we, we still um, archive it after that, right? Um, yes, I have an archive of them. I don't know. I guess that's a retention schedule we'll probably have to do. I don't know how long I'll keep them for, but for the YouTube channel, I don't really see a need to keep them because they're like Tim and I were talking, they're not a formal record. The minutes are the record, so. Um, so you can never revert back to a video? Oh, it or, happens, but, but the record is, is what's written in the minutes. Right, but if, if it came down to something, it'd be nice if we had this. Or is that not something you could utilize? Sure you could, yeah. Yeah, that's the thought behind, uh, you know, you got to do a retention schedule. want to think about that, just how far back you want to keep them for that very reason. To reference something. Suppose I think it's could, a great. I think it's a great reference. Suppose we could burn a DVD, you know, sure. after you know, when we start taking things down after a year or whatever it is, archive it on a DVD and just store it in a file somewhere. Yeah. They can be put on. I sure would board. tell you the intent of a motion or idea or something like that, or how we got to that decision. Decision. Yeah. yeah. That's a lot. Yeah, so a year, year wouldn't be enough. Minutes are, are more general. Oh, yeah. I believe all I have to have is the motions in them. Right, that's all you need. Yeah. It's, so you're, you're actually getting more than what oh, is absolutely. required. Absolutely. Do. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to minimize that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> good. I don't have a problem with that. No, they're not, it's not supposed to be a narrative. Right. Questions? But, yeah, the video would be good. I think we would extend that. They ought to take it. Why don't we talk like with Mac or something, see what other counties are doing about how long they're keeping. Because I could see. I think five years at least. I could, well, I could see some five year old decisions that you might want to look back and say, Agreed. how did we get to that point? How did we? How did that board even? What was the thought process behind their decision? Yeah. yeah. Well, right. there was something that you had brought up 
uh, it's been oh, a couple, no. no, a couple <laughs> months ago, and it was a couple years back. Sure. You had said we should we should maybe check the minutes to see what was decided on that. Yeah, we've that done would that be a lot. prime example. We've, we've done that with a lot of uh, minutes. We've gone back and checked minutes. And it's not always there, or it's no. it's brief, it's brief. It, it, enough to where it's well, there. And but you're not going to remember oh, something from no five years ago when you weren't even here to watch a video. You well, it's get the whole story that. of it. I'll remember it. Yep. They won't believe it. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's factual. <laughs> that's I'll know for sure. But they won't believe it. It'll be. Like, what's the reason for that? <laughs> <laughs> okay. That, do you don't like it when I'm right? <laughs> so, that's it. Yeah. yeah. We'll leave them up. Uh, we'll do it. My idea. I know it's right. <laughs> I know it's good. Thanks, Tom. This is appreciated. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, uh, very much. Mr. Ozier, come on up. Oh, thanks. Good morning. Good morning. The reason I wanted to talk to you is about as our cooks leave, replacing them with corrections officers, custody staff. Um, there's a couple of reasons for that. They're trained to deal with inmates on a regular basis. They're trained to self self defense, and they can be utilized in a lot of different areas of the jail. Right now, we have civilian cooks, so when they um, something happens in the kitchen, they hit a buzzer. We come down, we take care of it. Um, we had an incident the other day where they hit the dress button. We had to go down and take care of two inmates fight, um, which we'd have to do with the corrections officer as well. But they'd have the understanding and the, and the education to be able to deal with that in the meantime. Um, the biggest thing is to be able to utilize them in other areas of the jail if we need to. Um, we have one cook that's going to be resigning December 25th, I believe. I don't have her date. It's her last day. It'll be her last day, Christmas Day. And as you know, we have another one that's out right now. Um, the difference would be the classification. Now, this wouldn't um, eliminate the cook position either. So if we had a civilian cook apply, we still could hire that person. Correct. This is just giving you the flexibility. In, in this case, and I, Brian and I have talked, uh, we have uh, a unique situation where we have a corrections officer right now who has the skills uh, to take on the cook job as well, which got this conversation going about flexibility. Um, and. Brian has uh, shared with me just some ideas on scheduling and rotations and how that would work. Uh, but I, I do uh, definitely agree. The idea of having a trained corrections officer in there is definitely a step up in terms of safety of both the staff and uh, the customers, the inmates uh, that we have. Um, and, uh, you know, opportunity is there. So you know, this proposal is that we create that dual type position not create a separate pay scale for it, just continue the corrections officer pay, but take advantage of what uh, opportunity is in front of us. So does that make a corrections officer vacancy then? Um, I, I would have to defer to Brian. Uh, theoretically, yes, because you're going to have somebody that you're going to need. And then down the road, we hire a, a then down the road, we hire a, uh, um, uh, how would you call it, your uh, civilian cook? And then all of a sudden we got an extra corrections officer. Because there's two going to be two positions, right? And I can see a little shuffle here. Because there's a 12. You know, all of a sudden we get two corrections officers working in the kitchen. And all of a sudden, then we hire two more to, to replace them. And then we hire two <clears throat> civilian cooks. And oh, hey. No, you wouldn't do that. You, you'd have the, this would count as one of those cook positions. So you wouldn't be having another you would have a vacant person in. But you'd have a vacant we, we have a second one now. And yes, you could end up with a civilian cook, or you could end up with another dual person again, oh, right. offering that. Uh, well, I don't have a problem with the dual thing. Because there's going to be two two open positions. The one that retires your your spouse. Well, one now, the other one I'm not aware of yet. I don't. I can't say whether. That's fair. Um, but the FMLA, or she's off for what what period of time? Is it twelve months? Please. I think it's covered. Twelve, 12 weeks, days. but then I thought I saw something else just come through. Um, they can do a leave extension leave of absence for a period of time by pause, but I don't know. Yeah, I don't details right. on that. I would say it was 90 days, but um, even FMLA, there's the opportunity for extension on that. Um, so I don't know, days and weeks in here, I don't know, 12 weeks equals 90 days or how that. What I'm, what I'm, what I'm looking for is to, to try to replace 
the cooks that leave mm -hmm. with the correction staff. With correction Eventually, staff. that's what you want to yes. be at. So I wouldn't be full. The, the one that's that's off right now would be the one that leaves um, her last day, December 25th. Instead of, instead of hiring um, a civilian for that position, which we could, I could hire a corrections officer for that position and fill that position. What's the pay difference between the, the starting? starting? Starting wage, I think a cook starts at $13.59 and the contract the corrections have right now, I think it's $15.49. Well, there's only uh, $2 difference? Well, not even two, I don't believe. Uh, thirteen sixty four well, for the cook starting wage and fifteen forty nine for the. Well, if we ever the, get a contract. Well, this is under the old contract. Yeah. I don't know what you're. I don't know what you're doing. Says I haven't seen it. Yeah. <laughs> so. Um, is is that with the new one? Is there quite a substantial difference there? Than fifteen sixty four forty nine. There is, isn't there? I'm just trying to look at the the, the difference. Oh, I, I, yeah, and I don't know what the I, I had to go off what I had. Yep, that's fair. I, um, I don't know what the new the new proposal yeah. is actually for your. I believe everybody was going up. I don't know what what extent. If, two, if that's approved, I don't know. Oh, two things I can kind of yeah. enlighten you on. I think is oh, yeah. one. We did the study. We have to hire more. We're supposed to have more staff. Yep, we did that last year. So, you know. To, to put the extra correction Good. officers is definitely going to help us. The second thing I know, as you all know, my wife is the cook over there and she is retiring. To put a male cook in there, corrections officer, you have a better selection of pulling from the back because they use a couple inmates to help them. Right now, male, I'm sorry. Yeah, right now, my wife has two female oh. inmates. They come up and help her during the day. They've only got a selection of what ten females yeah. in there. Does a female have to have two females? A female can't have a. Well, <laughs> there was There's issues. Safety reasons, we, I guess, it makes sense. Right. We we used to do it that way, but um, we switched it around so that yeah, safety is one thing, right. and then allegations right. could be another right. thing. Right. 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 So if you have a male cook in there. Because then, sixty inmates. Then you get sixty inmates to choose to on who's going to go up there and help. And you have a better selection, and it just makes more sense. Do other uh, surrounding uh, jails pr do prisons do this? Prisons do have corrections cook. The, the officer that works for me was corrections officer for MDOC at the Stanish Maxim facility for 26 years. He works. He would be the one that I first choose to go into that kitchen because he has the experience. And uh, yeah, so prisons do do it. Um, for a while, they didn't because they switched from having their own staff to. Uh, Mark, I think it was. <laughs> That's now, they're, now they're going back to to maintaining their own kitchens. So don't we look at contracting the kitchen? Uh, the for some reason I remember some talk on that bringing in a contract, an agency. Not, not since I've been here, but you probably did. That was it's when I first started. Over, periodically, over yeah. the years, historically, the county has looked at agency, right? Outside Airmark, and there was another one. Yeah, I can't I think can't of the other one there. The last time I looked at it, um, a county north of here was paying two dollars and forty cents a meal, or two dollars and fifty cents a meal, and we were coming in at a buck twenty-five, a buck thirty some months, a buck forty some months. We were coming in under what they were paying. So, how many hours? I'm sorry. Oh. How many hours does a, a cook work in a day's time? Well, they're working ten right now. Um, they work ten-hour days. Um, if we did this way, I would switch the rotation to 12. They'd be on two 12s, off two 12s. The next cook would be on three, the same as the officers, A and B rotation. And the officers that, do 12 hour shifts? They do. It would increase the hours uh, worked in the kitchen and not necessarily in the kitchen. They could be utilized outside of the kitchen. That's what makes up 10 hours. Because right now I think we pay 70 hours a week for cars. So when you did that, that staffing analysis, <clears throat> or when the state came in and did that, mm -hmm. so would this individual be then, since they're a corrections officer, would they be counted, even though they were working in the kitchen, would they be counted as a corrections officer for staffing purposes? Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. Because the kitchen was that. not help, counted. No, no. his kitchen wasn't custody. I, I don't know if they would count the staffing analysis. They would probably count as like the state's analysis says you have to have four officers working. If one goes home, you have to fill that position. Would that it would probably cover us from having to fill that position with overtime? Um, I'm not sure how it would work for the staffing analysis as far as working in the back because they wouldn't be in the back all the time. They'd be back there when we needed them. So that was my question is if this would help correct that staffing analysis issue. 
it would. It would help correct it for the overtime purposes, for sure. Well, the staffing like analysis, the state, the state come in when they did that and they said, okay, you have to have this many officers and you have to have on each shift or each position right. during this period of time. Um, if we dropped under that, technically we're supposed to fill that position. We're supposed to call somebody in to fill that position. Having that corrects the officer. The kitchen would have that officer there. We wouldn't drop. We wouldn't drop below that that number. So we could utilize them from there to the floor. How much overtime are we incurring now? Well, right now it's it's up because we had um, well three different issues. I guess we we've got an officer that was off medical for medical purposes. We have an officer who's off quarantine, and then uh, we have the obviously the cooking cook issue right now that's going on. So right now the overtime so is who's, just high. Who's filling that position right now? Well, I've been filling it some, working in the kitchen. Um, a couple of the officers, the one officer with the experience in the kitchen has been filling in the kitchen. Um, and then officers, as far as the officer who was off, um, they've been filling shifts of overtime. So how are we doing? I see some overtime people. versus the budget. Because we're only in the second month of the fiscal year. Yeah, it was a perfect storm. We had three different three different incidents that's creating the overtime that um, I I actually came back a month early, but we had three different incidents, and I can't get into details, but obviously they're creating the overtime. They're unavoidable. We got some paperwork that came through. You've hired some. Mm -hmm. I've seen one uh, this week. We've seen a couple of transport officers. I think last week I seen two corrections officers. Yep, and they're training right now. They are in training right now. But they can't be turned loose yet. They're not ready to be. Right, uh, but it's just nice to see that they're <clears throat> absolutely, and they're very, very good uh, qualified people. I think they'll do well there. They're big too, which makes it nice. Big, <laughs> big deterrent. When you walk in with them. <laughs> yeah, I, I look at the one like this, <laughs> so that's a big deterrent when you walk. The one in that I know that I thought was big, and I understand this. The other one's even bigger. <laughs> so <laughs> <It's> <laughs> twice, <laughs> and he ain't fat neither. He's a big boy. It's a big oh. boy. So yeah, we're, we're getting some very good staff and that's kind of unique because um, a lot of the counties around, you, you look out, they're having trouble finding staff uh, and we're doing fairly well with that right now. How many open positions do you currently have for corrections, not with kitchen? None until October or until November 21st. November 21st is Scott Thomas's last day. He took a job in Lansing. That position will open up then. So right now, every position is filled in corrections. Correct. Um, I do have one officer that left because of the, the insurance issue um, to get a job where he had insurance. And he knows that you guys have worked on that. And whenever that is close, he would like to come back. So I'd be able to plug him right in. He's trained. He's certified. It would it would be the best case scenario for now, us. <clears throat> these officers that you have hired, they have to pass a test, right? If they don't pass it, then they... They pass the initial test. There's a written and a physical before I can even interview. Right, right. right. Job. Isn't there an MCOLS or something? Or? They have to go to an academy. They work under us for a year, up to a year, and then they have to go to an academy. So we know in that year whether we want to put money into send them to academy or if they decide during that time they don't like the job, mm -hmm. they're not going to do it. We don't waste that money up front. It's different than law enforcement, whereas law enforcement, you have to have that academy before you can mm -hmm. work. This is different. They allow us to train them, and then we send them to the academy if they fit what we want, or, and we fit with what they see as a job for them. So it's it's beneficial for corrections that way. But then they have to pass, correct? If they don't, right. then they're released. Correct. But they'd go through a 160 hour academy, and I have not seen one that we've sent flunk it. I mean, they, it's we haven't lost anybody that's gone through the academy for corrections. If I send them there, they're they're pretty good for the job. They know what they're doing. Oh, I thought that there was one that's taken some. I'll, I'll get with you later. I, I thought there was one that had taken that test a couple times and hadn't passed. And that's the pre-employment test. Um, I know what you're talking. I'll about. ask you because okay. I, I was told something, and I don't know if it's factual or not. But the pre-employment, the the written test is, I, I swear, ninety percent math. They have a, a pre-employment test that it's a written test you have to take and you have to score a certain percentage or you did have to, that's no longer in place. Um, you had all the, the majority of the counties in the state of Michigan were having issues with that because it was the last 15 solar questions are kind of subjective. Your answer might be different than mine. Neither one of them really wrong, but they're based on whether it's right or wrong on who wrote the test. So you had a lot of the counties complaining about that. So they changed that standard. That standard's no longer in place. So what's your guys' thoughts on this corrections officer slash cook position? Thoughts, comments? 
Brexit out. It's going to cook at that point. I'm in favor of it. Definitely. I think it's a win-win. I, I guess my only concern is uh, do we get to a point where some of them are cooking and doing corrections and the others aren't and they feel like they're doing more for the same money? Their classification is going to be the same and they're going to have to understand that going in. We're not going to, we're not going to change classifications. They're going to do it because they want to do that part of the job. I'm not going to, uh, basically, and this is a misconception in my mind, when, when you're an officer and you work for a facility, you don't get to pick and choose what you do or don't do. There's certain job descriptions, but then there's certain wording that falls under, as long as it's reasonable and you're ordered to do it, you need to do it. You can grieve it later if you want. Um, but I'm not going to send somebody in to cook that isn't isn't doesn't want to be in there to do it. The people that will go in there, the people who actually want to do it. Can I fill in behind them if they go on vacation with somebody to, to do that? Yeah, absolutely. But what I'll do is I'll have those cooks that are in there to prep everything. So everything's ready for them when they do go in there. You're going to have two people that are corrections that will be in there the most of the time. It's not going to be an alternating or rotating schedule for, for in the kitchen. Because that's kind of a, it's kind of going to be specialized to a point. Um, but it will be able to be filled with corrections officers to cover. So will you will you get to a point where maybe two or three of them decide they don't want to cook anymore? Reasonable job assignment. I guess I set the assignments. That's the purpose of creating, if you will, the correction officer cook position, because if that's your classification, then you know. This is part of your responsibility. And the counter argument to, you know, I'm doing more, well, okay, but the cook position, we will have that when we eventually get our contract, pays less. So if you would rather be a cook, okay, we can accommodate that and take the correction officer title away. It's actually advantageous to have it described this way. So you're already getting the additional compensation in case we need it, it's it's in our back pocket. And we're kind of paramilitary. There's certain assignments that are set that, and in, in, in I set them. They rotate from different positions in that jail. They don't get to pick and choose. I mean, if they're not feeling good one day and so they're having trouble on the floor, obviously we're gonna let them work to where they go up to the, to the tower so they have less contact that day or that, but they, they don't pick and choose, they get assignments. So will there be a different job description for this officer so that that way we don't run into grievances and? Yes, so what we'll do is combine the two job descriptions into one. So it'll be a little bit thicker. You'll have all of the same duties and responsibilities uh, that the individual positions would have. Same uh, is true though in corrections as is uh, with the majority of the county. We don't have job descriptions at the moment. So we'll create this before this person? Scratch. Yes, before we actually put somebody in it. Uh, and frankly, I could have that done before Thursday. Oh, I guess it's Tuesday. Careful what I promise here. Yeah. Well, we don't need it until. No, you run out of time. Yeah. Because there's some training involved. Yeah. Yeah. There'll be some training. <laughs> actually, next, next to me, the whole, we'll have it out for you to look at. Questions? Any more questions from you guys? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Item four, Mike, or D, excuse me, Michael Benefield? Benefield? Come on up, sir. Network support, sales, M33 access, broadband needs. Lots of fun stuff. Shorter report. Yeah. <laughs> Pardon me? I think, it's, I think he's just got a short report today. Biggest thing is honestly having a discussion with you guys. I've talked with Tim, I've talked with a lot of different folks, um, tried to get around as many townships as I can. It's really hard being one person and go to different township meetings when I'm covering like three counties now. So <laughs> um, biggest thing that I'm running across in, in our county here is the amount of people that are outside of the, the so-called hubs. So you have around the lakes in town, you have you know these hubs where there's and in our county here, you're looking at roughly about 30% of our county is in those in those hubs. Everybody else is outside of those hubs. And those are the ones that are calling my office, pinning their location saying we need more internet, you know, I'm trying to work from home or I'm trying to, I got kids, 
like I have kids and it was, it was a really tough transition trying to get, you know, services to my house even. And so there's a lot of things that are being requested from, from the public that I didn't realize it was that much of a demand. I knew there was some needs out there. I really did, but I didn't know there was that much of a desire for, for more speed, more internet services. The last year completely transitioned everything. Like it was ridiculous. Like it was this major onslaught of, we have to have it. How do we get it? What do we do? And so I, that's why the past year I've spent a lot of time going to township meetings and talking to people and trying to figure out how do we do this stuff. Most of the time it was, okay, I would go to the public. Um, the, there's, a, there's a chunk over here on uh, Gallagher, Morrison, uh, on the other side of 33. Um, everybody down that road, they all basically came in and said, we want internet, what do we gotta do to get it? He said, okay. Um, here's the material list. This is what we have to pay for. You guys can help pay for the materials and the permits. We'll bring it down there. And so we ended up cutting them a, a okay, they have no bill for the next three years because they put 2000 some dollars up front. That basically paid their bill for the next three years is what it did. But we just applied it all towards material and permits. That's what we've been doing is working with the public to try to get the broadband to them. And this is fiber optic services. This isn't coax or DSL, it's fiber optic to the home. So having these kind of services is a major need now. Like everybody's just like, we have to have it. There's chunks of the county that are just, it hurts me to like drive through these areas because I have friends now that are like calling me, hey, what, what else can we do? How else can we work this out? Um, Ashley Nelson is a person I deal with on a normal basis. She's got a wireless service, but she's been working from home nonstop now. And it's been really hard for her. That whole chunk over there, there's people all the way down, all the way over to the airport. No, like, this is not right. <laughs> like there's all these areas that are just, just like that, where there's people constantly saying, what, do, what else do we need to do? What kind of money do we got to put together? So when all the funding stuff started rolling around, I was like, okay, I will do my best to talk to people to see what we can do to service these areas. These are, these are our considered underserved or unserved areas according to the FCC. Um, and so those are the areas I'm trying to target. I'm not trying to, to focus on you know, West Branch itself. There is, you know, Industrial Park definitely needs services because I, I know some of the businesses there, but there's outlying areas that all of a sudden are now, now considered workplaces. So, so have you guys formulated a, a plan? I mean, I'm right on M55 and I don't have high speed. Right. Um, I've had you guys come out and look within the last year and there was nothing you could do, <laughs> yeah. um, which is extremely frustrating, but what is what what plan have you guys formulated that where you could provide the biggest thing is is getting the mainline construction in so uh, for instance we worked with big creek and got that contract already done and finalized we're putting fiber optic mainline construction from mayo to luzerne because that whole chunk there there's nothing there no services available other than basic dsl which is like uh, i think the most folks got out there was 10 meg if they were close enough. Um, so that's what we're doing. We're, we're putting the main line in and then off of the main line, M33 access is filling in these little voids and filling in the, the little tiny chunks, I guess you could call it, so we can service the people. So the biggest thing as what we're doing is trying to coordinate where's the main line construction need to go in the, in the areas and then coordinating with the, the county and the townships together um, to figure out, okay, where are your areas that you deem important and necessary to get services to? And then we we figure out and plan together, okay, this is the path we need to take to get to these areas to service those locations. That's what we, I've been working on. So are you requesting townships come to you guys with ideas? Well, or it's, are you it's a combination. I've been going to townships as long as they show any type of interest. I actually set them up an account on a mapping system that I run. And I give them an account. I set, I put their stuff in there, and they tell me where they want to go. 
And then I draw the lines on the map for them. They talk to me about areas. I show them all the data I have. If, if people from their township have called us, I show them those areas where people have called. And I, I kind of break it down for them and then show, you know, work together with them. So that way we can, okay, these are the areas you guys are concerned about. And then I take that information, I share it with you guys, and we, we just coordinate. And that's my biggest thing is I want, want coordination because I don't want to just blindly just throw lines in the ground willy nilly. I want to make sure it's done right. And because in the long run, I want my kids and my friends and my kids to stay in this region. And I need to make sure that this region is taken care of for the future. I'm not trying to do something that's just going to put a band aid on things. I want to make sure this is done and done right. I mean, there's, again, there's so many people up here that can utilize these services that. This is my, my, I guess you could say my desire to get this done, no matter what we got to do. Even if it's to, like teaming up with another ISP to figure out their section, like we've, we've even talked to another local ISP in the area that they have fiber optic services. And we're talking about joining up with some of those things and saying, okay, well, that's two ISPs in the area coordinating efforts to get things done properly and done right. Um, Again, it's just a major plan right now to figure out what we can do, figure out the money side. I'm, I'm not trying to make money on the build. To me, that's stupid. Like, Quit there's, there's hardly, there's Don't hardly, say you're not money. trying to make money. We don't have to make money. No, no, here's, here's my thing. I did it with Big Creek. We, we basically set up everything at cost. The FCC required, the federal government requires us to pay our guys extra wages which I'm like, okay, that's like saying, here's a bunch of money, now cut it in half. <laughs> okay, so my guys are going to make money on it. The company itself isn't making any money on it until we hook people up and, and actually get them services. So the build, personally, the build should not create money for the company. The build should just get the stuff there. If the company is going to make money off of it, it needs to be the company doing the work to get the customers hooked up to make sure they have services so then they can create money out of it. If you it. build it, they will come. Correct. You know that. Right. And you that's know exactly that. it. You're going to make money. Come well, on. Yes. When the, the day's run, done, yes. and the day's done, you've right. got to make money. But I'm not going to make do it. This I'm not going to make it on the bill. Superhero. Well, I, I know other counties. Okay, other you areas. brought up this small neighborhood. Yes, sir. Okay. How much, how much of a small neighborhood did you supply and how much did it cost? That one there cost us. Uh, cost the consumer. The consumer. Yeah. It cost right. the consumer. So the consumer doesn't have a bill for the next 36 months. How much did it cost? It was like 20 some thousand dollars in materials. Between how many people? How many households? There was literally, that's how much money we brought in. So it was, I, I don't, I don't know the number off the top of my head. I can well, look it you, up. I've been, I've been to four township meetings and you've been to mm -hmm. at the same time and you've, and, and you're talking to townships with 36 square miles in them, and you're offering them at best eight, linear, eight miles of road to get down. And if, if you just took one section out of 36, that'd only be the, that'd only be the perimeter of one section. Four miles is a perimeter of one section. Well, first of all, you got to look at the construction cost. We need to look oh, at how yeah. much it costs to put it in there. Absolutely. You look um, the in order for me to plow it, it's cheaper to plow than it is to bore. So, and again, that's where I got to pay my, pay the guys different wages. Because and when you come to the creek, it's harder. And when you come right. to the pipeline, it's harder. Right. So the, the construction cost it. is what I'm it. talking about paying for. So construction of the, now making money off the construction. I get it. We're not going to make money off the construction. The company does not make money off oh. the construction. And that's what I'm talking. What about. does Mills have? They have high speed. Yeah, and I think there's there's charters spread charter. out that's in a bunch of different areas. That's why I said there's little pocket areas yeah, where charter. charters at, and it's it's funny, but that to put stuff services in for charter to put services in. Yep. You're talking ten to twenty thousand. I've heard one person tell me it was like thirty to forty thousand for one mile. Yep. Okay. I know somebody. Um, for me to do, it was uh, equivalent of twelve miles essentially from Mayo to Luzerne. We have to go under a river. 
we were we ended up having to it was like ninety thousand dollars what we what we wrote it out as that's because i had to pay my guys extra wages because of the federal mandate you have to do davis bacon um so we had to calculate their wages and everything into that of how long it's going to take them to get from point a to point b okay that's a lot of miles for that price if you do the numbers. How many miles did you say? It's, it's roughly 12 miles. For how much money? $90,000. We got to go under a river. What do we got? Four. Well, what, if, what about if we take 12 miles, miles without a river? Well, again, if you plow it, it's different price because my I don't have to pay the guy an extra wage because he's running a board machine. So it. So that wasn't a fair. Com that wasn't a fair right. cost in comparison. So so if you're if you're doing the numbers. If you run it on average, um, run some numbers real quick. So if you're looking on average, you figure out per mile, I think I was doing, it was like not, it was under $2 uh, of a foot, a foot, which was, if you break that down, was, yeah, if you do the That's cost analysis. $10,000 a mile. Right. I said it would be, yeah, so it's under, it's under two, it's under $2 a foot. You asked Charter to do that. Well, I'm not asking. Yeah. We're asking. Like I you. said, we're not asking Charter. Charter's right. not sitting here. No, I, that's my point. Okay. You that's said they were roughly nine thousand, though, is mm -hmm. what you said. Yeah. And you're roughly ten thousand per mile. It, it, again, it just varies on. I understand. Time, so. We yeah, need that's, to compare that's apples roughly. to apples, but. Right. So, is there any other? Could we get because that is what all my I I don't think I've seen it in my townships yet. No, I haven't been able to go over there. Everybody's township is all on the same night. Yeah, I know. It's always a first week of the month. I understand. But I mean, are there other people we could get bids from? I mean, obviously you're yeah, local you and we get, appreciate you that. Charter. You can but do, uh, I, I don't know anything about this. No, no, I'm saying you, you could ask Charter. Um, you can ask, uh, what's the- But that is what we're hearing a lot of, at least I am right. in my township. So we have numerous little lakes and these people are, are up here now looking to stay up here. And that Correct. is obviously their biggest complaint. They're working from home and is, is, is internet. So that is what they're talking about using these funds for. And again, the reason why I'm trying to give people maps, I'm giving them maps, we're drawing lines and we're going out and I'm driving the road and figuring out what we have to do. Is it a bore? Is it a, I have to calculate all that up and then put it into the, the federal system and figure out how much to pay a guy that holds a shovel and right. yeah, it's, it's, what, time for, what time frame like um are you looking at so well right now are I'm, you right now i'm booked into the first part of the next uh spring like i've got i've already and again this is i'm trying to get things established now before the chaos ensues because i've got mount rincey that's talking to me and i've got um Oscoda, obviously, there. Oscoda County is now trying to uh, establish legally how to if the if the township does. So if, let's say it builds a hundred thousand dollars. The township gives fifty thousand. The county gives fifty thousand, and they're all putting it under the county's lawyer. So that way, the township doesn't have to figure out how to do the legal stuff. It's all under their lawyer, and so that way, it's all you know, under one tree, so it's easier to document and everything else too. Um, but that's, they're trying to team up to get broadband pushed in. So that's what we're working on in Escoda. Um, again, that also helps the townships to utilize their funds a little farther and they can push a little farther than uh, if they can. So the biggest thing is teaming up together to figure it out. I'm not saying you utilize us. My biggest push is let's do the numbers. Let's draw the lines. Let's figure out the the first part of it because that's that's the biggest start is one where can you go with the funding if you want to utilize the funding what can you know what's the areas you can put it in it has to be an underserved or unserved area you can go through another area that has service but you have to end the end point has to be where it's underserved or unserved so again we can figure these things out but you have to make sure what you're doing and where you're going because this is all going to be audited you got to make sure you cross your T's and dot your I's. Um, so I'm trying my best to make sure that we all do that. So I don't want any township to have to pay back anything. And I want to make sure it's all done properly. Um, and I, I know that the cost is 
where it should be because we're, I'm, I'm the one doing the analysis. I'm the one going out there, figuring out the cost breakdown and going through the materials. Materials are getting harder to get to because that's another thing. Um, it's, it's definitely a, a push to figure out where we're going, what we're doing, get the plans together. Um, mm -hmm. Any township that has any interest in that stuff, I'm trying to get a hold of them. I, if they can get a hold of me, that's great. I can set them up with an account, set the map up for them, get it figured out, and then plan to come to their meeting and, and sit in and stuff like that. I, I'm just jumping all over the place right now. I'm even doing weekends. It's crazy. <laughs> There's townships that have meetings on Saturdays. So. <laughs> Thank you. So. Any questions for? Big project. Yeah. Well, I'm looking at the road commission the site right now. There's a thousand forty-four miles of, of road that the road commission is responsible for. That's not total roads. Right. Okay. That's just for their responsibility. All private drives and stuff like that are added on. I mean, ten thousand dollars a mile. I don't think my calculator is going to add the going to provide the number at the end there. <laughs> So if you spend this $10,000 per mile as things change and develop and they're going to different uh, materials and I don't understand all that fiber optic stuff. I mean, how long before you see that they have to go and update all of this stuff to the, to the new fiber is the new. Oh, it is. Because yeah. one of my townships were discussing that. Yeah, fiber is, fiber is the latest and greatest, and it's, 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 it's going to be the gold. It's the gold standard. It's the be Everything's the gold standard initially. Uh, well, no, well yeah. Fiber I, get, I get what you're saying. It's just like the satellite dish. I mean, my gosh, I mean, uh, the eight foot satellite dish, the last antenna you'll ever have to buy. Right. And that was a plan. <laughs> That's what they see. told you. <laughs> the next thing you know, they came out with the one that was 12 inches. Oh, the last thing you ever have to buy. Right. I think I think my dad bought the rabbit ears with the tinfoil on them, and that was in 1962, and that was the last TV antenna but, he had to buy. But I mean, that's know? my question is how long do you foresee this if, if all this money is invested before? That's considered outdated and slow or dial up or whatever. Yeah, you won't even have it solved by then. I mean, I I don't see what would come next because we're using light as our speed source. So what's faster than light? Hundred years from now, you'll be. Oh, I don't know. Right. <laughs> right. I mean, George Jackson. I'm going with Ted. <laughs> so yeah, with that, I mean, I mean, the good thing the good thing is with fiber optic, it's it's all about what you put on this end and this end. So if there's an update or if there's something that gets you updated, can update it, you with... can update this stuff. Stuff in the ground is done. You don't there's and it doesn't get messed with with weather and you know snow and, and water doesn't exactly. short it out or you know. But, it, but again, you're talking you're talking you're talking main lines, correct? Main lines. Well, main. it's also into the house. The way the way we service everything, there's fiber optic line going all the way into the house or structure. Yeah, but I'll, I'll, but I'm talking about. These lines you're talking mm -hmm. at ten thousand a mile. Mm -hmm. This is main line. Main line. Then right. you guys come in and run to the individuals. Correct. Because I, it, legally we can't run it to the individuals by utilizing the funds anyway. Um, you can give vouchers out, but you can't legally run it to the homes. So you can put. It is designed for the main line construction only, and then the person has the option to tie into that line. They can call in and say, "Hey, I would like to have service." That's what you're doing to, to the areas. And how I'm not running it to the home. How far how far can you run? I can run fiber the, optic. The lines. little the little lines. It doesn't matter. It's, it it's doesn't the matter. same line that's in the main line. It's a glass line. I actually was gonna bring stuff in. I haven't got caught. Um it's the same same glass line that runs down the main line. It's the same glass line that runs to their house. Um, it's literally the same stuff. So uh, there's uh, no change. There's no, there's like DSL right now. It runs down the road. Some of them have fiber running down the road, which is hilarious. And they go to a box. And out of that box, they run uh, DSL, which is uh, essentially copper lines to the houses. Now, if you're more than 300 feet away from that main box, your speeds all of a sudden drop. So if you're paying for 25 meg here, you have it right here. But as soon as it gets to your house, it's one. <laughs> so, um, and so that's the biggest concern with DSL is that there was major like drops. So they have fiber optic going to their hubs and the roads, but it doesn't do any good because it's all copper everywhere else. And that's not going to change. Um, coax, coax has a good uh, run because they can get they can get stuff that's done to uh, like up to 500 down, 500 up typically. 
on a coax line if it's the newer coax. Um, a lot of your older plants can't do that. Um, they're pretty pretty limited. Like the one up in Mayo's, completely limited. I think it was 60 meg maybe. <laughs> so, um, again, there's, there's a lot of differences. With those, those two still have an impact from weather, corrosion, all that stuff, whereas the fiber optic stuff does not. So. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Or we got discussion items, corrections facility, bond refunding. There's a bunch of the material that you've got in there. Just I'll run through the, the highlights of it. Um, what this um, does, it's, I guess, can be described like uh, you went through the process of refinancing your house. So we have uh, roughly 17 years left on this bond. What we would do is refinance at a lower interest rate and see a savings. Our total gross debt uh, service savings based on the proposal that you have in the material would be uh, just under $374,200 in total. That works out to roughly $22,000 a year uh, in savings on just the bond payment itself. There are expenses, this isn't free, so there are expenses that go along with this. This would include the required bond advisor and bond counsel. Uh, the bond advisor with the material that you see is the same uh, group that does the financing for us right now. Uh, we did look at a couple of other uh, options and this, uh, with their costs were actually uh, uh, better than what anybody else had. I wouldn't necessarily suggest changing at this point anyway, keeping the financing with the people who already know it, um, I think is, is gonna be much more efficient. Bond council, we have to have uh, total expenses, just under $100,000 to do this. The nice thing is though, that cost gets rolled into the bond itself. This isn't a check that we have to write out of the general fund. It's actually incorporated then into the refinancing effort. The timetable for doing this, if the board is interested, uh, is in document 4A4. Uh, we start out with a resolution next uh, Tuesday that would uh, allow us, uh, would allow the bonding uh, uh, advisor to proceed with the project. Some of the big highlights uh, on or about January 18th, we would do what's called a rating call of standard and fours. And that's literally a meeting that runs, uh, can run anywhere from a half hour to an hour. It would include uh, likely myself, the treasurer, probably the clerk, maybe a county attorney, uh, but this is where we answer a number of questions about the county, go through the audit and go through the policies and procedures that we have in place. What internal controls do we have? All this adds up to a grade or a rating that we end up receiving. Our current rating is a double A minus for uh, Ogemaw County. That's an okay rating. Uh, do we have a prayer of going up? Probably not, just simply because of the way the economy is today. Uh, as our, uh, in our meeting with the uh, uh, bond advisor that we have currently, uh, they're saying right now that the uh, rule of thumb is just to maintain what you have which I think is a you know, decent goal. I don't think we would have any trouble maintaining that. Why is that important? Well, it's an awful, awful lot like a credit score. So the higher your bond rating, the better credit, your, or better interest rate that you're gonna see on, on any kind of bond that is issued. Uh, that would be followed on January 27 at your regular meeting with a bond authorizing resolution. So at that point, we will have a pretty good idea of what the interest rate is. We will definitely know, or at least have a good idea of where standard of course is going. That would be a critical uh, point for the board as to whether we go forward with the refinancing or not. And you would get another set of uh, documents that would outline what that cost is. All those numbers would be updated based on what the current interest rate is and based on what our bond rating is. A final uh, official statement would be issued on February 3rd. A bond sale would actually occur on February 22nd. And then the uh, bond closing would be March 10th. So you can see it's a multi-month process uh, to accomplish this. Now, why do we qualify for even doing this? Well, this is pretty common. You get roughly, you know, uh, you know third to halfway through your bond. Uh, it's always good to reevaluate what the market is and whether or not it's uh, economical. And clearly this one is, at least in terms of uh, uh, what our annual savings would be. So the proposal today is to um, ask if you would be willing to have uh, next week's agenda resolution proceed with the process. I guess I, I don't, I, I looked it over and there's something I guess I'm not understanding. So we currently pay for bound, 
on council, correct? Or is this a new $35,000 charge that we're gonna? It would be uh, anytime you finance through a bond, you have to have a bond council that's advising you. So this is project specific. So this bond council will be for the refinancing effort or the rebonding effort today. Won't be for anything else, just for this, this effort. So this is a one-time charge of $35,000. Right. So the next one is that Baker Tilly of $29,500. Now I seen what you put, what you had on here about them. Now we currently have we utilize uh, uh, locally a CPA uh, firm. They couldn't do this. No, this is a specialized field. Uh, you have to have certain uh, uh, qualifications and, and uh, certifications through the state and federal government to be a bond advisor. It's a completely different field. So, but that twenty nine thousand five hundred is annual charge be really a one-time charge for this so this isn't going to go a year as you can see I had oh that. i thought i seen that that's an annual i seen that uh, somewhere well it's we're only doing one bond that's so for this project other questions no i can see you refinancing i mean I understand refinancing. It's going to save us money? Uh, yeah. It <laughs> well, looks like it'll save us almost a year's worth of payments. Uh, does this stay, we stay on the same uh, schedule, 17 years? We're not, yeah, right. we're not extending out farther. It goes no. out to 2038. Yeah. That's, oh, yeah. yeah. But this is no set interest rate, correct? It isn't before. Not yet. We will know what that interest rate is when the, uh, what, Point would that be probably right around the final preliminary official statement? We'll know whatever the bond ratings are, or whatever the interest rates are around that date. They do fluctuate, usually fractions of a percent. Uh, you know, they're never. If you refinance your house there. today, you go and talk to the bank today about refinancing. You're not going to get today's interest rate. When they get done with the paperwork and going through all your your appraisals and everything else that's when oh, that's that day not, they're going to do that's it that's not true i did it twice in this pandemic um but i have never we went with it them. The they I, gave you the the interest rate the yeah. day you walked in yeah yep you had a lock-in rate i do yeah. <laughs> of course i, I lock in um but I, that's what i'm not understanding so could our our rate fluctuate from now until 2038 once we're locked in yeah i'm date certain, let's, let's pick that, well, certainly by the bond sale on February 22nd. I don't know exactly where they established this, but certainly by bond sale, we will know what that is. And so anybody bidding on the bond, you know, that's the rate we're looking for. Now, somebody hopefully is gonna come in and undercut whatever that rate is. And you know, that's, that happens, it depends on how hungry the uh, buyers are. So they could come in and actually give us a better rate. Uh, and there's, you know, we had one time happen back in 08, 09, there was about a three month period where all of these bond sales just stopped uh, because they weren't coming in low enough. They just literally froze the market, it stopped. Uh, you know, Gaylord Schools was burned by that. They had a big uh, expansion project that they had to go out and restart the process. So it was another six months before they could get their project going. But that's a fluke that um, it's only happened once that I can remember in 35 years. Uh, so I doubt that'll happen. We could get to that point though, and um, you know, I have no understanding of how the interest rates work, but let's say they shoot up 2%, mm -hmm. we can say, okay, no, we're, we're done because that might end up uh, actually costing us more uh, to refinance at that point. So then so, what happens if we say we're done? Well, yeah, that decision point will be uh, February 3rd. Um, or that doesn't sound right. Anyway, your regular meeting um, right around well in the January first part of February, you'll know. And that's where we'll have the final numbers from uh, uh, bond advisor uh, for moving forward. If we were to get to that point, and, and let's say no, we can't do it. We're still going to owe though that thirty-five thousand bond council. And yes, no. We're going to owe some of it. Um, this is taking this this budget that you see in the uh, material is taking through the whole process. So if we never get to the end, we don't do a sale, we don't do uh, the uh, reading hall or something like that. There'll be a prorated amount. We won't owe it all. 
And, you know, I can't tell you this is a sure thing, but it's as close as it gets. Really, you're not going to see that the interest rate spike to a point where this isn't going to work. I right. don't really see that in the forecast. No, I think we should go, keep going with this. Absolutely. Oh, I agree. Okay. Who can say yes? What do you guys say? I, I, I need to look a little closer at this, I, but, but you got three yeses, so go ahead and put it on up. Oh, yeah. Uh, item 4B, DHHS fund transfer request. I have to admit, I don't understand what's happened in the past on this, but uh, the request itself doesn't seem unreasonable. Uh, DHHS had uh, roughly $2,900 left over in their budget for 21. They're asking the board to allow them to transfer that to their shutoff fund, uh, formerly the critical needs fund. I assume that's uh, like a utility shutoff. It is, and yes. There's assistance that's paid. And that um, the board has apparently done this in the past. Uh, clearly, I don't have that history. So um, that can't be done administratively. That's something that the board would have to authorize. And that's the request that's on the table. And I see that back in these emails, it was more, I think last, we're in here two days a year. So didn't the same thing occur last year? Is that what I? I don't recall it happening last year. Tracy's here now. She might remember. And I wasn't part. I, I my my year's next month or week. So, um, from what I understand, though, yes, they do this at the end of the year. They have to account for everything that you know we pay them. They have to give us some sort of budget. This is what money they have not spent, and so they're asking to like more or less keep it in this fund. And it, Karen had mentioned that they do this every year. So. We haven't run into any problems with, with the auditor doing this, or not to my knowledge. Probably not. Words they would have told us. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> the, the critical thing is that there's some record. They're not. Really. It. Yes, it's okay. Let's keep it. <clears throat> we could use some money. Don't me. They did don't you, use did you hear Commissioner Scott? I did. He That's had input. Your call. I don't, well, I just gonna bring it. Sounds like they don't need as much budget if they they don't spend it every year. What the heck we laying I, it out there? For? I don't know how much typically has gone, but I sit on this board and I wasn't at the last meeting because I was <clears throat> medical procedure done. Um, but a lot of what they utilize those funds for, are like child seats and things like that, and I know that. There, because of COVID, there wasn't a big demand for that stuff. And what they expressed to me in prior meetings was historically this money has just been rolled over to allow them to take and assist people for emergency shutoff, whether it's gas, electricity, to be able to provide some funding for them. I mean, 2,900 bucks is not a whole lot of money, quite frankly, in the scheme of things. So what would you like to do, Commissioner? Would you like, like to, roll to roll it over it. or would you I'd like, like to see it roll money? over? I, roll it over? Go into a good cause, um, um, no matter what. I'm I mean, kind of curious what it's been year after year. Historically? Yeah, historically. Been, I, I don't know. Uh, their budget's not, <clears throat> the, your entire budget. Not astronomical. It was like $4,900, I think it is. You know, it's not a, a huge sum of money to begin with. Right. You know, so. Do you recall how much we do? I don't, I don't recall. That seems long. I'd be able to look it up really quick. It, it is not it. much. That's, oh. that's true. It's, I could say in the grand scheme of things, it's not. I don't think $2,900 no, would do much for us. No. Mr. <laughs> Newbecker? Do you like shy walks? You can split it up amongst Pardon me? <laughs> as far as what you want to do with the money? What it's been used for in the past. Oh. I don't think we got enough information on it. <clears throat> Department of Human Services, is that it? It's about $5,000. Yeah, that's what I thought it was. Forty nine five. dollars And they haven't spent $2,900 of $5,000? Jeez. They're getting a lot of our money. So then, how about if, if we keep this in mind next year? And find out where they're at. 
you know, why we're, we're, we're uh, negotiating, negotiating the budget. If they haven't spent that next year, then we definitely need to cut that 5,000. Like I say, if it's going into the community and it's helping people that, you know, you know, I so hate, to, hate to take What do you guys want to do? We have to decide, are we putting on a resolution? Are we, we got two yeses, um, maybe, a no? Say either way, but I, mean, I don't know why they're not budgeting this in their budget, in their own budget. Why don't they do budget two thousand dollars into a shutoff fund if they do this every year? Agreed. This has been a you know this last year and a half, two years has been a complex year though, complex times. Well, just by reading the letter, it it says it sounds like they repeated thing every year let's put it on and we'll decide next week anybody can reach out to you with questions right yes okay item c administrative secretary wage yeah I looked this morning um, you know, $100. <laughs> <laughs> well, i wonder where we're going to get that jeez if only <laughs> right uh, so i developed uh proposed hourly compensation schedule for the position taken primarily from uh, uh, union contracts that we currently have. So this would fit that, that same range, not more, not less, but roughly the same. Uh, and then that begs the question of um, you know, the, the total annual cost. And I've got three different um, options broken out, a 20 hour a week position, 25 hour a week position, and a 35 hour a week position. And you can see with 35 hours being full-time that that's a significant jump in the total cost of a position. Uh, I candidly, I don't have a preference for any of the three. Uh, but I could certainly make any of the three work without any issue uh, with that regard. So the question then is, is that a fair compensation schedule, that hourly rate that you see above? And then uh, you know, what type of position, you know, part-time, full-time would we be looking at? Now keep in mind that these are annual totals. So the 20 hour a week annual total at 18,160, on a best case scenario, we're looking at um, somebody in place probably right around the 1st of January, which means 25% of the fiscal year is over. So this year would be impacted with roughly 75% of those numbers. So let's bear that in mind. It does assume on the benefits that the uh, maximum coverages for family and, and for pension are uh, just assumed. Uh, they could be less, they won't be more than that number. Questions? Well, you gotta, you gotta ask what caliber of person we're gonna get if we're gonna talk 20 hours a week versus a full-time job. We want, we want the best. This is a, this is not just a secretary that takes dictations and things like this. This is going to be a very, um, can be a, high, a higher level position that we're going to have. We got to have somebody that's going to be involved in the most intricate parts of our government. confidentiality and, and huge in confidentiality. Um, you know, what, do you, what do you get for 20 hours? You know, no bennies. I, I'm asking you, Jack, because you're the one been outspoken about part-time versus full-time. Well, we all say Agreed. We, we met so much resistance coming into Tim's job a year ago, understandably after all the cuts and everything that happened. I mean, honestly, now we got that position up and going and now bringing it into a, another full-time position. I just wanna make sure whatever we do that this position is sustainable. It's not fair to bring somebody in, say say somebody um, in her, in her uh, office, in her transfers to this position. Um, does very well, and after six months, you know, we decide that this that our budget doesn't allow us to sustain this position. 
Um, I just would like to do a trial period between January until the end of the, the fiscal year of 20 hours per week. I mean, I don't know if it's fair to say you don't know what you're going to get at 20 hours a week until we put it out there. And then maybe we can't get a qualified individual. And, and I just think taking it back to the public um, and saying this is what uh, we're doing, this is why we're going to reevaluate this, see if this needs, um, if if the workload is there for a full-time position, um, then we move forward. Okay. I take part of what you're saying, but you know, when we talked about having an administrator, that was change. That was a huge change. Correct. Changes. So, so many people are resistant to change. And in my experience, it was in-house that we got the most resistance about it, not, not out in the public. And in my experience, um, uh, this is a whole package thing. We're, we're so far behind, uh, but we we found out here in the last year and a half that we're so far behind on everything. I mean, uh, job descriptions. We don't have job descriptions. Simple job descriptions. Our unions come to us and say, "Well, you got a grievance. What's this? What's this person's job supposed to be?" Uh, well, we can tell you, but we don't have anything in writing. Why not? Everybody else has got it in writing. Why you should have it in writing. Well, we don't have it in writing. We haven't had it in writing for, for 30 years. We've had the Department of Treasury here to tell us we rank 83rd in a, in a state of 83 counties that, of, of fund balance. We got to get, we got to get high speed, get back into what we're doing. That's not internet either. I, I, I agree with you. Started. I, I agree with you. Um, however, Tim's been overwhelmed with work. Agreed, but some of that busy work, and I don't think we're utilizing Tim's skills fully because he's doing some secretarial duties. Um, but a lot of his busy work, or let me, let me rephrase that, some of his busy work just got completed with negotiations that's now good for three years. That's done and, and over with. So now, he can focus on other things. I, I, I'm just really will stand behind the 20 hours a week initially starting to see where this goes. Um, I think we can under we can explain this better to the public. Um, I, I we're back to this. Okay, then we hire this 20 20 hour week person, whatever whoever it is, and we skip the good ones because they want a 35 hour. They want a full time job with pennies. And, and we're we're not even looking at them. We're we're they're off the table because we're going to look at a twenty hour. But we're making an assumption. We don't know until we try. They're not even going to apply. Yeah, why? And so so we get into this uh, six months into it and find out. Oh, geez, yeah, we needed this person. Wow, yeah. Hey, thanks a lot for this twenty hours. You don't want to work any more than that. Well, you hit the road, and we're going to start applying for. We're going to put applications out for thirty five hour full time. So what's worse, uh, six months from now, you take somebody that's part time to full time, or you take somebody from well, full time. Let me finish. Or you take somebody that we hired full time to say, "Hey, we can no longer sustain this. We're going to take you to part time." It could go either way. Okay, so I hire this twenty hour, even if they want to bump up, but the thirty five full, full benefit person didn't even apply because it's only twenty hours. Okay, they didn't even apply. So we didn't even look at them. We didn't even get a chance to talk to them. So then you get into the thing, this 20 hour person, and they're doing fine. Oh, they like to go to a bump up. Yeah. Do they have the skills that the one we didn't talk to? Probably we not. We don't know. Right, we don't make, even know. But you're making that assumption. And then that could go from also you have this great person at they're at full time and we we can't sustain this job. We have to take them out to part time. So here goes this great person because they can't. Well, I'm going to bet the other way. So I'm I, I, I understand, but again, I would really hate to cut a position when we can't financially sustain it. We have no idea what's going to happen in the next year with well, where we're to... at right now. Well, I things think are not we, better. We got a budget. We got a budget and. I mean, we got ARPA funds for the next four years at least. Yeah, I mean, we we we're setting in pretty good, pretty good shape right now. I mean, for compared to we were even three years ago. 
I mean, our fund, our we don't have a fund balance yet, but uh, we're we're on the road. We're, we're on the road, change, but we had to use five hundred thousand dollars of that federal fund, so we're we were not. You didn't mind giving away twenty nine hundred because you didn't think it was much. <laughs> <laughs> so we're really not. Wow. <laughs> well, and the wow. entire and if, and, and I, Jenny, I, if you look I, at it, I, if you look at it the other way, the entire ARPA funds qualify as lost revenue. So we really didn't. But saying we're setting good without those ARPA funds, we are not. No, exactly. So that's not a fair statement. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not disagreeing <laughs> with you. No, but to say to this year we're in bad shape worse than we were but like like mark just said it it just it just refunded our our lost weight uh lost uh revenue it, it may be a crotch uh in 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 your argument then we're going to be in worst case in four years not now i think we're in a lot better shape i think the glass is half full okay i think it's Closer to three quarters full. <laughs> and so, so, so what I've been hearing out of my constituents is, okay, when when Tim was going to get hired, you know, it's like where is the money coming from? It got figured out. He's doing a phenomenal job. We all know that. Okay, now you want a secretary? Where's the money coming from? Right. Coming out of the ARPA funds. Well, again, maybe, that's for four years. Maybe in the in the short but, term, but what? <clears throat> but, uh, Hiring, hiring Tim, and this is the thing I said right off the bat, was you get him in here, he'll find a way to pay for himself. And he's going to do it, but it's just going to take time because we're so far behind the eight ball that it, it'll just take time. But so he's got to have the he's got to have the tools to make that happen. And and we're so far behind the eight ball that that it's it, it's taken hard. It's taken longer. It's taking longer to do to, to this, and he's buried in it. Commissioner Becker. Well, number one, at uh, twenty hours a week, sixteen bucks an hour. Good luck finding anybody that's going to be qualified for this position. Okay, I can't even find people to work at, at, at my business, that, which is in a lot of cases less responsibility. Um, and we see how uh, our past. Uh, benefits and pay had resulted in not being able to find anybody to work for the county, uh, whether it be in the courthouse or at the sheriff's department. So if you're going to do this, and there's obviously a, a high need for it because there's a ton of work to do, then I say you make a competitive package and you go get someone that's going to do the job for you. Because if you get somebody that's not very high, highly qualified, then maybe they don't really do much for us and we waste uh, the 18 grand or 22 grand a year that we they got into them. Um, if for some reason we can't sustain this uh, position at $52,000 a year, then we're probably in a lot better or a lot bigger problems at that point. Um, we're probably looking at making a lot more cuts than just one job. And I think that this is very, very critical right, but to going forward with our county um, I mean, and I'm just speculating at this point, but let's say Tim stays for three years um, and then he um, tires or moves on somewhere else if he decides to. If we had somebody in that office and they've been working closely with them and this is the type of position where they may stay for 10, 20 years, you don't know, we'd have some consistency in that office because you never know what's going to happen with the board. We could have four new board members next year. I, I just think this would have five. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Any given but no matter whether that person is part time or full time, you can still have the consistency. Um, I mean, when we're looking, if we have to look at, to me, $52,000 is a lot of money. I, I mean, it, it's not, but $52,000 <laughs> of the budget is a lot of money. If we have to look at cuts next year or the year after, this would be a position to go versus an officer on the street keeping keeping individuals safe. You know, I, I, again, I that's my Tim. What do you? It, it's your office. It's your need. Well, this is going to be a secretary that's not just for Tim, but for the entire board. Agreed. But now I'm going to ask him what his needs are. Well, definitely, I can 
keep a person busy 35 hours a week, there's no question. <clears throat> and Commissioner Newbracker brings up a good point in terms of consistency. I really dread the day, the Thursday, that I can't be here for some reason. I really dread that day. I don't want you meeting without me here. I need to know what's going on. And so that that's uh, that's, that's great pressure. But you know, if this position were uh, in place, if something did happen, at least you'd have somebody here with a little bit of background to provide some input. Uh, and the same just holds true with just simply getting the meeting materials around. You can see, I was adding stuff as early as this morning. That shouldn't happen. You should have that stuff a couple of days ahead of time, all of it. And it's just not practical. We're doing okay. We're not complaining. We're doing fine. Uh, but it would be nice to, get, to uh, uh, have things like that accomplished ahead of time. There is a ton of clerical type things that just need to be done, just files that need to be gathered and things that need to have organization put to them that you pay me too much to do that. Mm -hmm. Be frank, mm -hmm. you pay me too much to do that. So yeah, I definitely feel you know, 35 hours can work. Would I take 20? Absolutely. I would take that too. Um, but I would point out that the other point that was made at entry level, like 16, 20, good luck finding somebody. But if we do the full time, do that calculation hourly, works out to just over 29 an hour. Now, hopefully you're attracting others who are employed somewhere else in the community that maybe would like another opportunity. Uh, this would definitely open up. I was gonna potential. say, highly doubtful it's gonna be somebody at entry level with zero experience. They could come in with five years experience at 2208, correct? They could. Um, my projecting this thing forward is that we would advertise it at the entry level. And then, or we probably put the range in there. Uh, but you typically, you've got an entry level for a reason. So if this is too low, then we need to make the adjustment. But I thought with this new wage scale, their experience, because we've seen some significant raises lately, their experience is is part of the scale. Right. We bargained that with some of the uh, unions, and we, we did some things with their scales that really made that uh, necessary uh uh, move. In this case, I don't suggest you need to do that. We would put the, the range out there in the ad. This is what it is. If we get somebody that's uh, absolutely phenomenal, I'm coming back here saying we need to bring them back in or bring this person in at a higher rate. You'll have that conversation here by establishing this. And when we get our personnel policy in, and we will be working on that here between now and the end of the year. Uh, I intend to put a rule in there that says, okay, maybe you allow a department head to hire in at the one year level, but if it comes in any higher than that, this board needs to be part of that conversation because then it becomes even more significant. Okay, that's what we do, but we would just plan right now that we're hiring somebody in at that lower end. If a candidate comes in and said, that's not enough, and if we really want that candidate, then we start talking. So if, you're, if, if someone applies in our, in our office, in our department or... Would they come in at their current wage or would they, because I mean, how many are actually at the 1620? I'll tell my head. I mean, do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. They would come in well, at their that's, current. That's, that's something we have to negotiate. That's something we have to negotiate. This is a, a non-union position. Yeah. Yeah. I, I will definitely, um, I, I would not be comfortable offering a position are offering a pay rate at the upper end of that scale without coming back to the board, whether that's an internal or an external candidate. So that conversation we'd have to have if, if we had that, kind of, that quality of a candidate come through. Okay, so do you, what do you guys want to do with this? Do you, are you requesting this beyond the next meeting? Are you? Well, I mentioned a timetable, a like best case of having somebody actually in the seat in January. In order to do that, we would need to adopt this uh, scale or a scale. Um, very soon, if not the next meeting, then the one following, just timing it out. Where in the budget is this money going to come from? Well, that's that's what I need to bring back as part of the resolution and to make that known. You know, tell you what lines or whatever adjustments that we're going to make. I'll actually put it right in the resolution. Thank you. Yes, make your resolution. Definitely. I don't care if money has to come out of contingency. Item 4D, County Council Review. Are you going to, is a, the resolution going to be made? He's, yes, he said yes. Okay. I just was asking the chairperson. <laughs> <coughs>
Don't give me the eye. Caddy console review. <laughs> it's better than something else I could give you. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, last me the whole meeting, there was the question about uh, just exactly how we spent our money on county council. And I put together some uh, simple pie charts that I think really do draw the picture out well for us. Uh, the first one is the total legal hours and cost uh, for all hours billed. Uh, I did want to break out this Fox versus Ogama case that our council is working on. That's uh, somewhat unique of a, a situation. It's been going on now for, gosh, I want to say three years. Uh, this is the case where there's now a class action across the state on the sale of properties at tax sales and where should those proceeds go. And all counties are facing an expense for that right now. We just happen to have our corporation council representing us, along with the um, uh, other councils across the state. And of all the hours billed, 18% of the hours went to that case for the total cost. 42% of the total cost, legal costs, were on that one case. So um, having said that, now I want to uh, focus more on the, the corporate council duties itself, which is on the second page. And as far as the total hours you're billed, and again, these are very general uh, uh, categories. If you get into the invoices, they specifically tell you what case or what project they were working on, how many hours, uh, and that does tend to uh, fall under attorney client as well, because there's often some description in there that uh, gets into what they're doing on a specific case. So four general categories, research and review uh, was 85% of the hours that were spent. And I'll come back to that in a second. Uh, meetings, 5% of the hours. Now, meetings would also include uh, meetings not just with the board, but with others. So if there were a meeting with a department head, that would go in here. Our council currently doesn't charge for meetings with the board. So if it's a board meeting, that's a no charge. But if it's an individual meeting with a department head, that's a different matter. Uh, that, that's billed hourly. Document preparation was 7% of the time and correspondence, that's emails, that's uh, uh, conferences, you know, in quotes, uh, phone calls uh, were 3% of the total hours billed. Now on the total cost, you can see while research and review was 85% of the time spent, it was only 67% of the dollars. I want to just put an asterisk next to this. Um, in the council, uh, their office did provide us with a list of uh, activities that were performed during the internal investigation. And remember, we recorded a flat rate of $1,500 for this, and that's all they charged. Had they charged the regular hourly rate, it would have been just shy of $20,000. So this is a bit deceiving, 85% you know, of the time, but only 67% of the cost. That cost percentage would be quite a bit greater had we not gotten that flat rate for that one project. Document preparation, 20% of the cost, but this gets into you know, reviewing, uh, and we had some uh, uh, couple of uh, situations develop over at the correctional facility about uh, mail policy and, and, and the rights of inmates to get certain articles of mail and, and so forth, and that took time. Uh, so it could take some, some not only uh, preparing documents, in that case policies, but the research time that went into it. And that's not uncommon that you, um, as far as preparing those documents, that you would see a, a cost at 20% like that, because there's a lot of uh, back and forth, making sure that their document is consistent with uh, the latest uh, court rulings and so on. Uh, those correspondence were 9% of the cost, as you can see. So that's you know, all the letters that were written on our behalf and uh, responses to uh, other attorneys and so on. So that's the breakdown uh, of where, uh, where our costs have gone. And that led to then the question, uh, we, when we hired Foley and Mansfield said uh, that we wanted to review this after about a year just to see where we are and uh, discuss whether or not we want to, uh, again, search the horizon to see what other options are out there. And so that's the point where we are right now. Actually, it's probably uh, about a month or two late on our one-year goal, but nevertheless, uh, we got a pretty good idea of what an annual cost is looking like and what that breakdown looks like. If 
you are interested in um, considering other options, I would suggest rather than issuing the RFP and going through that process, we did get four uh, very good responses the last time. I would suggest maybe foregoing the, the actual resending the RFPs and probably getting those same four firms to respond that instead um, that we would invite them in to talk to you directly about what they offer and how they would approach Ogemaw County if you're interested in doing that. Didn't we, when uh, Holy Mansell, when we decided to go with them, didn't they present us with two different options, an hourly rate and an annual cost? They did. Do you remember what the annual cost? Did we exceed this 20? Their annual, if I recall, was, was or the uh, retainer, if it was, okay. I want to say it was 25,000 and you can see our total cost, not including that Fox case, we're 23,179, but we're one month short of a full fiscal year in, in this presentation. So this takes us through August 31st. I do expect to see the September invoices literally any time now. Um, so that's, you know, just keep that in mind. It's just short of a full year. Well, the $1,500 deal was over and above the retainer. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, that would have been because it was a very specific, it wasn't a corporation council type activity it was go forward and do this special project so the hourly rate was pretty close to what his retainer fee was right. estimated to be right by looking at this correct yeah it's it's close do you i mean you you obviously have quite a bit of experience in this is that cost twenty three thousand dollars does that look substantial to you does that look yeah, but, you know, the, the oddity is the Fox case. Uh, as far as the regular corporation council work goes, yeah, we've had some unique things happen over the year, but that's kind of common. Too. You don't know what you're going to get hit with, you know, from uh, uh, year to year. And bear in mind that is, you know, we see other bills for council in here, but these are bills that are through the insurance assigned council. So we have, for instance, the minor case dealing with that culvert. Uh, that's, that's a different pot, if you will, or a different line in the general fund. So not to confuse the two, this is just the work that we generated at this table. And no, it's not on account. I, I think it's reasonable. We haven't gotten any updates on that Fox case recently. Hasn't been a lot of movement on it. There are um, arguments going back and forth now uh, as to whether or not this case could be made retroactive or proactive. And if it is retroactive, how far back do we go? Uh, oh. All those things are being ironed out. Wages. That goes retro. That's huge. Yeah, fortunately, not going to have as big an impact on Ogemaw County as we'll say, uh, you know, or Clinton County, for instance, yeah. where they've got a lot more activity. So, do we want to put out RFPs and see what we get? No, I think I think like you. His idea is skip the RFPs. We already oh, got I'm... four four candidates out there to ask them to like, but we should have each one of them come here and let's ask them. We have to reach back out to them to see if they're even still interested. Right. That's just depending on where this discussion goes. That would be what I would do is call them directly and yeah. say, Are you interested in your dates? I would like to see that happen. Yeah, I think it only makes sense. So are any of them local? Or, or no. what's do you no. recall them uh, for? Lansing. One was in two were in Lansing, one was in Grand Rapids, and then only Mansfield is in the Detroit area. I forget which suburb it is. All about St. Matthews. Okay. Do you guys agree? I don't have a problem with putting it up for bid as well, but obviously I'd like to invite you know, what we have. So I guess so I totally understand not using the RFP, not utilizing the RFP. We don't we're not putting it out to bid again to see if there's any other people that are interested, we're just going back to the four people that, that put in a year ago to say, hey, are you still interested? Right, that, that's that's what I would suggest. I just, I don't believe you're gonna get more response than what you have. If the others weren't interested, I don't think they're interested today. What do you think? You, you wanna put it out? You want to put it out a bit? Well, the, if you think the local I guess what are, what, firms got it? What are we out? So if we put it out for bid and these four people, hang on, if these four people don't are not interested, they're not going to be interested whether we put it out to bid or not. I mean, what's going to change their mind if we just call them and say, hey, do you want to come? And they say no. What does it matter if it's 
also put out to bid. I think what changes he, the mind is that there is an awful lot of effort that goes into responding to an RFP. There and, is? Oh yeah, okay. we're asking, we had a slate of about 25 questions that we wanted answered, uh, which I'm, I'm sure with these four, any of those answers would change very much, but there, there is effort on their part within their firm and therefore cost to reply to that RFP. And it becomes a hassle. Gosh, you're gonna put this up to bid again. Well, gee, I don't wanna go through this again, or they're too busy, or you know, who knows? Well, we uh, could narrow the question like, Jenny, it just say, hey, you want to come and just talk to us and don't don't answer any questions. They're right still gonna they're still gonna have to give us a cost because our costs could have changed from last year to this year. Right. So and essentially would, it is still going up. I, I would yeah, I would ask them to update those tables, whatever they sent us, if their costs change at all. Um, and again, I think those questions will, will be the same or, or answers will be the same to those questions. So I can certainly get that back to you in advance of interviewing the firm that comes in here. So if you had other follow-up questions you had, you have some, some base to work from. But it would, uh, first of all, expedite the process for us. It would mean, you know, 30 to 45 days that we don't, we're not sitting waiting. And for the firm, the effort of having, actually having to reply is eliminated. Just my thought. I would like a firm that doesn't have any ties or any any past with, with any, any departments, any a, a brand new firm with no no relationships or no connections. Uh, well, in, in, in that respect, then three out of those four that replied last time would fit your would fit your criteria. I don't recall, but I'm well. I would hope fully so. Mansfield was the only one out of the four that we had dealt with before. Uh, I don't remember, but I'm, I'm you're probably right. Do you want me to repeat that? I prefer not to. Just say it. Oh, oh my God. Oh, it's, 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 it's your nose. <laughs> it's on video. And that's good for a few years. I'll bring that up. I'm sure. <laughs> I'll get that right up. I'm going to be in the green. I'm going to be in the green. I'm going to be in the green. Yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> <laughs> thought you were wrong once, but you were wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Still wrong. <laughs> ARPA discussion. Uh, and the ARPA, I've updated the list that you saw from last time. Uh, a few of you have gotten with me about some other projects and just keep those coming as they, you know, we just want to keep a, a running tally of these. Um, before I get into that any further, I want to jump over to the next page, that resolution of support for the Michigan Prosperity Roadmap Plan. This resolution is being um, encouraged by Michigan Association of Counties, who was um, a participant in this group um, that was uh, helping set priorities for the state ARPA dollars. And with the discussion that we had earlier uh, with broadband, we are really going to need to tap into some of those resources as well if we're going to really have an impact in Ogemaw County. And you heard some of the costs per mile, they're pretty large. And if we want to do anything else with the county funds, um, it would be important to team up with, with the state. This doesn't get a foot in the door for any funding or give us any special advantage, but it does make a statement that this county recognizes that the state also has funds out there and that we would work to probably leverage some of our money and maybe with the uh, townships in the cities, maybe leverage some of their money for a project that is a priority for the state. And that hopefully would move us up on the list for grant award uh, with, with those funds. Broadband is a huge one with the state as is uh, things we don't get involved with uh, water and sewer uh, is pretty large as well. I read, I'm sorry. I read through all that huge with water infrastructure. What am I, what am I missing there? What, what? Lead pipes. <laughs> that's, uh, that's a big one that's in the uh, Well, I know, but that's the Make sure to well, look at broadband doesn't get to the other one. Harbor. And most of the large real. cities, those, uh, that infrastructure, 100 years old is pretty common now. Yeah. Uh, There's a lot of in the city of West Branch here. Yeah. I, I think West Branch would be wise to check into some of this to see. Oh, well, they have, they I'm sure. Have they, oh, Mr. Yeah. Mayor? <laughs> slash understanding. <laughs> Between that, the arsenic. And, uh, right. Well, that's where your proposal was taken to get the new 
treatment plant. No, well, they're drinking so. our water now up there in Oklahoma Township. <laughs> we got perfect water. <laughs> we are. Bigger pipe coming in. So, but yeah, that's that's where it is. Water and sewer uh, are both huge. And I, you know, the next big crisis, if you will, with infrastructure, would not be surprised if it's uh, sanitary sewer systems failing for the same reason, just a dated material or dated uh, infrastructure that just needs to be upgraded. Yeah, that uh, my village there in Prescott, they have a heck of a time with their sewage plant over there. It's it's awful. Uh, geez, it just stinks. It's awful. It's outdated. And, uh, it's one thing after another over there. But anyways, I. I so, so this, we're this, willing, we're this yeah, I don't have a problem supporting that. Well, what, what would be the down downfall to not supporting this? I, I don't want to suggest this would ever happen, but you know, if one more county supports it, maybe something goes. You know, I don't know how many counties have signed on already. I know quite a few at least, uh, but you know, but we're unanimous among all of our counties telling the state we think this is a good plan. I, I would hope that has some influence on how they approach it. But we're already getting the monies. We got our monies. This is money the state has now, uh, completely independent of anything we have. Oh, okay. So this is additional money that we would hope to leverage. That we're hoping to get to fix our lead pipes. It's been going in our case, and all the townships sign a resolution to us to get our money. Say that again? Well, it'd be just like the townships having a resolution in each township try to capture some of the money that we the federal get. Money. I suspect the Michigan Townships Association has something very similar circulating among the townships. I'm sure the MML has the same thing, but uh, cities, everybody would, everybody's on board with this. I think, again, we have a better chance of actually getting money versus just along the This is not committing us to anything. No. <laughs> okay, I just want to, okay. Just a resolution. Okay, are we done with that? I am. That's you. Um, item 4F, KCC Millage. Is there any update on that? I unfortunately did not shoot a message to Greg to remind him of the meeting. I don't have an update on it. So I do, I think. Okay. <laughs> I had a uh, constituent, a very intelligent constituent, come to uh, have a discussion with me related to, it's called a, a I'm going to say this wrong, referendum. Referendum? Yeah, referendum. just give me a second. I'm yeah, a referendum. Now, I did a little research on that, just a little. I was hoping Greg would be on the call today. And I'm I'm wondering with this, because all the research that, I, that I've done on it looks like it, it's related to laws. But I'm wondering with what, what you do here is, is you pass out or you go around and get signatures. And you'll have to get, I'm not 100% sure on what percentage of signatures we're looking at. But Mr. S Commissioner Scott brought up at the uh, one of these meetings, as far as bringing these millages back on the ballot to let the individuals of Oklahoma County uh, make a decision if they want to go forward with these millages. With this referendum, it seems like we could either do one of two things. We could either leave the leave the core area because since Kirtland has left Ross Common or getting the millage back on the ballot for the entire core area. There has to be a way that we can do something with getting enough signatures to put this back on the ballot for voters to go forward. The problem is, is this would include Osco to Ross Common, Ogemaw, Crawford County. Does any of this make any sense? Yeah, it does, yes. I, I don't, if, with, if with- that's with, enough that you can use. With, so why hasn't it been used? It seems like there's been so much research on this and, and I don't, Pauline, are you on the call? I don't know what she's typically on there. I, I, I'm wondering why this hasn't been done because, but it looks like there, in order to do this, it looks like there's a time period. But if this is done correctly, I mean, there's obviously enough time to get this on the next election. Can we get more information on this? Is this, is this, I'm sure that it could be easily, signatures, enough signatures could be obtained to go forward with this. If this is 
a legal way of doing this. I, I, as far as I know, you would be petitioning the state legislature. Well, I think that's one way, but I think the other way is, I think there's two ways of that. And again, I'm, I'm just digging into this. And don't ask me why, because well, I have enough going this on. This is what but... I've been told by the rep and by, we've been told by me and that this is a state, this is a statutory I don't, law, law. Right, you could take this to get rid of that law, which is not what I would want to do. I mean, I think that that's way above where I would want to go. I would want to just pull us out of that area. I think there's different ways to go about this. I don't think we want to eliminate that state law. I think that's way, I, I think that's uh, a little deep, but I think as far as pulling Ogemaw County out of this area, there's got to be a way to do this, to get enough signatures, to validate those signatures, to move forward with getting this on a ballot next year. Who do we ask? I'm sorry, I, well, I have to go with the council on that. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, unless we know of an election expert, which maybe the clerk's office knows of somebody who could do that. Come on, Tracy. I mean, you see- That could help us all with that at a, at a county clerk's level. If there's county clerk association, there's a means find that this. out but probably the probably uh the reason i'm just guessing the reason why we're not uh we haven't seen petitions is because it's the lack of volunteers to do it well we have People a volunteer that's been here every single oh, yeah, meeting I get it. one person yeah. well has she been given correct legal counsel you know it, that's quite costly um i mean this affects a lot of constituents in Ogemaw county i think that this could be done but again, with the top way that I, I discussed, I think you have to get, my question would be is if you have to get so many voters in each county, which would be Ascoda, Roscommon, Ogemaw, and Crawford may struggle a little bit in Crawford because that's where it sits now. But if we could combine all of that and just get so many voters, I mean, obviously I don't think you're gonna struggle with Ogemaw or Roscommon. Roscommon is just as angry as we are. And Ascoda, I don't know how many voters are there, but. It, if we had to get so much percentage in each county, or we could just get a total okay. so of all four counties. Just just as a point of discussion, I mean, so so uh, uh, so then a uh, petition could work, say. I hope so. Hypothetically, a, yes. Who's who's gonna run this thing? Are we gonna pay out money to hire somebody? But no, Pauline's. Or hire a company to take care of it to do this i don't think that because that's needed it is a t there most all petitions have a time uh, uh period Correct. isn't that true tim right there. i mean once you start a petition you got yeah. it you got it you can only go so long Correct. it's not continuous that you can get signatures for the next five years and so you got to go out and canvas and you got to go out and and drive around and spend money to get this stuff done Yes, possibly, but also when when some and other I don't recalls, think that we can. I don't think that we can compensate people to do that either. That's not what I'm saying. Okay. We have an individual that's been at, at numerous meetings that has obviously put a lot of effort. And Brenda Simmons is the other one put a lot of effort into this to see if they're willing to take this to the <laughs> next step. If we connect them with the right steps to do this, I think you're wrong. I think people are going to come if, if you say sign this petition. We're going to be at uh, a parking lot at this day, this time. I think you're gonna have people lining up, just like with all of the petitions that you've seen in the last year. Um, I've seen a few. Oh, so recalls, uh, whatever you wanna call them, whatever. I, I, I don't think we know till we try. Obviously what we've tried in the past, recent past hasn't worked. Okay, well, the, maybe it's not compensating people wage-wise, but I don't think as a, as a county board that we're, we're gonna be able to take a side as far as paying for the the paperwork for petitions or anything like that, I I, I that's not what I was I I, mean, I was going to now put this back on. If this is something that we need to first find out if this if we're able to do this. If we are, then we need to put this back on those individuals. I don't have time to do this, but this was something that was brought to me. I've done a little bit of research, just started researching it, and this affects a lot of people. 
um, a lot of constituents that are voicing concerns that, that are upset over what's happened with us in the past year related to KCC. All right. Well, if we're right. going to ask me and to give us some kind of thing, I guess we better ask them, does somebody need to form, uh, a civilian need to form a PAC, a political action committee, something like that, that takes on costs? Because there's costs with doing this. Agreed. Agreed. 100%. I, mean, I don't think the county can do this. I think we can research the, the information and that's all we can do. That's all information we need to find out. But again, there's been numerous people that have been here and others out that are, I think are gonna be more than willing if they have the correct guidance to do this. If they're gonna do it, it's gonna be correct. Well, yeah, if they're gonna do it and we have to stay correct. It's just like a millage. We can't advertise as a public body. We can't advertise for a millage. We can provide information about it, but that's it. Well, my question is say there's 75, say 75 percent of the people in these four counties sign this, mm -hmm. okay, and we put it on a ballot, mm -hmm. be voted on, it's voted on. At that point, the state has their statutes. We just voted and said, we're not paying no more. So what happens, we quit paying it. Madam Chair, you have to excuse me, I need to depart the building. Um, I, I, I guess that's all information that we're going to find out. Right. We, we've opted out at that point in time. So again, I think that there is a way to do this. I, if we get enough signatures to I put this so. back on, the, now maybe it goes back on the ballot and it goes through again, great. But then the, the residents have voted with the current situation, right. which is where it's at. Right. Oh, I agree. Jen? I don't know. Yes. I'll forward you that email. What's okay, why don't you do that? Okay. I have no one question I'm asking. Okay. Do we have next? Mark. What's, I'm sorry. I want Mark just forward that open. Okay. okay. I've got to go to soon. Or the ordinance update. No, no update. Okay, that was quick. Yeah. Appointed board and commissioner well, appointments. Are we, where are we at? I mean, I'm going to forward this to Tim and he's. No, going no, no, no. Or the ordinance. Where, oh, are I had hoped yesterday to get that material off the townships. Did not happen. I'm hoping okay. to get that done today. I, I want to get it done this week, get it off my desk. Can you send a copy of what you're going to send them to us? Mm -hmm. Yep. Because I haven't seen it. Okay. Um, on the uh, appointed boards and committees, you have a list of expired terms or expiring terms uh, in the material. And this is just a heads up. This is the time of year to do it. Um, so you want to fill these vacancies, uh, hopefully by the first of the year, because most of them expire on December 31st. A lot of these are uh, positions that maybe the incumbent wants to be reappointed and that make it very easy for you. Others, you have vacancies or you have, uh, in a couple of cases, uh, we have members serving on committees or boards that uh, their terms expired maybe a year or two ago. So we're going to need to clarify where all those stand. Uh, we've caught up with a lot of them, but uh, be like the last swoop, and then we'll finally be on a regular schedule for reappointments. So just an information item for you. We can put something on our web page about vacancies. Uh, we can certainly let each of these boards and commissions or the members know and then find out if they want to be reappointed. And then uh, if necessary, we could even put an ad in the Herald asking for interesting people to apply. I think that's perfect. Okay, so you don't need above. anything from us. This is just information, just correct? Information, and this is coming uh, by your second meeting in December. You'll want to fill all these vacancies. If you uh, feel like going out to do a little recruiting, that would that would be okay. So, Commissioner Scott, your your term expires December thirty first, twenty twenty one. But well, does my term as commissioner expires then too? Uh, I'm, no, that's I, I'm a statutory member on that board. Term as commissioner is another year yet after that. Right. What you do at your annual oh, it organization is. Oh, it meeting is. is 2022. It is 2022. What you do at your annual organization meeting in January is uh, do appointments for the okay. for the commissioners. Oh. So if Commissioner Scott wanted to be reappointed, he felt one blank to be appointed for another year. Do we find any commissioner will sit on that board? Do we find anything out on the NEMSCA board? For the commissioners, you were going to find we're out. We're having a meeting tomorrow here oh. in West Branch. They sent me an invitation. 
And, and oh. that is a commissioner C, yes. Okay, so yeah. there does have to be a commissioner. I didn't hear back on that. Yeah. Because there are residents from Oklahoma County that serve on that board. There are. Uh, this is a very specific seat uh, assigned to a commissioner, but we do have other reps. Okay. It's a big board. Where in West Branch? Board. Oh, nice. Okay. Anything else? And then I added the economic outlook breakfast is scheduled for, I, I should have announced this at the meeting last week and I apologize, I did not. It's scheduled for uh, November 10th at 7.30. Um, there's going to be three speakers. There's going to be Tracy Simone from Myers, Justin Benjamin, J Justin Benjamin from Finished Concrete, and Ray Stover from Michigan. Um, just talked to Stu this morning. It's been scheduled at a couple of different locations because things have changed a touch. It starts at 7:30. Um, you will have something there to eat. I'm sure of that. I have to bake it the night before. I will. <laughs> I will as well. Just call me because I took the morning off. Okay. <laughs> Um, so we're not sure right now it's scheduled for Gray Road. We're, we're going to just go ahead and, and it's, it's scheduled for Oakland. Pardon me? Oklahoma Township. Yeah, on Gray Road, correct? Yeah, right. Okay. Yep. So if you guys are able to, to attend, um, Ray Stover is an excellent uh, speaker, very knowledgeable man. He serves on our EDC board. Um, I'm sure will be full of knowledge. Uh, Justin Benjamin, most of us know him. Um, and uh, Tracy, I'm not familiar with, but uh, she's a speaker for Myers, so. Yeah, and we're going to, um, <clears throat> we already had contact with people within the, the county that would like to sell to Myer. Um, One sushi guy and somebody else wants to give, you know, we'd like to get as much local talent involved with stores as we possibly can. So this is gonna be a good time to connect with those things. And then Michigan is also partnering, Ray, let us know with uh, Myers to put a uh, like urgent care possible yeah. clinic in uh, with Myers. But yes. anyways, anything else on that, Sue? Well, then in part of it, it's going to be too as well. We're going to encourage, EDC has, um, has some priorities. One, the first one is uh, fiber optic and we put that high on the list. And then child care is a big thing, big, big issue in this county because there's just not enough of it. And with new businesses coming in, they need child care. And hospitals don't need somebody nine to five that stop their shift. So we're looking at, you know, bigger, bigger things. So we would like to look at partnering with the townships and the county on the ARPA money to get funds so that we can get better coverage, people bang for a box, because if you put a job out here and a job out here, it's not, you're not going to get competitive prices. They're all in one package, you're going to get a better deal, and your bucks will go farther. So that's what we're hoping for with EDC. And I think I do get talk to uh, Tim about it, and a lot of the counties are doing this, and I think it's a, it's a good idea. So we're looking to spearhead that as well. They are requesting an RSVP, so you can get online for the economic outlook breakfast there in RSVP through uh, social media. Thank you, sir. Item five, public comment. This is the final public comment. Again, please, three, three minutes. Is there any public comment in the, uh, in the room? Any public comment on the phone? Yes, this is Jeff from the Veterans Office. Hi, Jeff. Hello, good morning. Um, I, I just wanted to bring up that, that the boards and committee chart. Um, Mark, our actual, uh, Expiration is actually April 30th of the year. And Mark was reinstated because it fell during uh, COVID when we were basically out of office. Uh, but Mark was reinstated. The next one coming up is actually Larry Boyce, our World War II rep in uh, 22. World War II rep. He's Vietnam. Who was that? Larry Boyce. He was Vietnam. Did you hear that? Jeff? Well, I know Larry Boyce was Vietnam, but he's a World War II rep on our on our meeting. Oh, thank you. Vietnam. Uh, Don Card is non designated, and Mike Thorne is Korea. Huh. Jeff, I'll call you. We'll get all that straight. Okay, out. sounds good. Appreciate it. Thanks, Jeff. Any other public comment on the phone? Motion to adjourn at 11.09. Support.
All in favor say yes. Yep. Opposed? Motion carries. What I know for you to sign. Oh, that. Uh, Housing. Yeah, I printed that off. It was 